Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 24th of February. At least two terrorists neutralized in encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan meets Sri Lankan President in Colombo discusses bilateral ties. And celebration in Nepal after top court reinstates lower house of parliament. And now for all the details. At least two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based Jashe Mohammed terror outfit were neutralized in an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. The encounter broke out at the Shalgul forest area in Anantnag district early in the day as cordon and search operations were underway based on specific inputs. The operations were still going on in the area till the last reports came in. This came after two policemen were killed in a terrorist attack in Srinagar city of Jammu and Kashmir last Friday. In another incident on the same day, three terrorists were also killed in a gunfight in Shopian district, while one police personnel lost his life in a separate encounter in Badgam district. Authorities in India have warned that a breach of guidelines on testing and other measures to contain the coronavirus could worsen a recent spurt in infections in many states, particularly after it detected several variants. Several Indian states such as Western Maharashtra and Southern Kerala have reported a surge in cases as reluctance grows over mask wearing and social distancing norms. The seven-day rolling average of daily COVID cases rose for the ninth consecutive day, crossing 13,000 on Tuesday in the most sustained surge in the pandemic in India since infections peaked in mid-September last year. India's tally of infections stands at 11.03 million, swelled in the past 24 hours by 13,742. Indian authorities warned on Wednesday that a breach of guidelines on testing and other measures to contain the coronavirus could worsen a recent spurt in infections in many states, particularly after it detected several variants. Several Indian states such as Maharashtra in the west and Kerala in the south have reported a surge in cases as reluctance grows over mask wearing and social distancing norms. कोविड-19 का इस स्ट्रेन की वजह से ज़्यादे माना गया है इसमें और हमें तो बिल्कुल प्रिकॉशन लेना चाहिए कि जो अभी लोगों ने काफी लापरवाही की है मास्क लगाने बंद कर दिए हैं सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग नहीं है और ये बिल्कुल मैं समझता हूँ कि हमें बिल्कुल सावधान रहने की ज़रूरत है Meanwhile, Delhi government has said travellers from five states, Kerala, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh and Punjab will have to show a negative COVID-19 report to enter the Indian capital in the coming days in the wake of surge in coronavirus cases in those states. Reports suggest that this order will be enforced from midnight of February 26 to noon of March 15. Several other states have also made it mandatory for visitors to produce COVID test report. A news from Sri Lanka. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Wednesday met Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa in Colombo to boost bilateral ties as part of his maiden official visit to the island nation. Earlier on Tuesday, during his meeting with his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajpaksa, the two sides pledged to strengthen cooperation in the sectors of trade, investments, education and defence. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa at the Presidential Secretariat in Colombo on Wednesday during his maiden two-day visit to the island nation. The discussions were mainly focused on common interests such as trade, tourism and adoption of technology in agriculture which both countries could positively leverage on, President Rajapaksa informed on Twitter. 
Earlier on Tuesday, Khan held talks with his Sri Lankan counterpart Mahinda Rajapaksa and the two leaders pledged to strengthen cooperation in the sectors of trade, investments, science, technology, education and defence. Reports suggest Islamabad also offered a credit line of $15 million to Sri Lanka for defence and security cooperation to end menace of terrorism. During our bilateral discussions earlier this evening, the Prime Minister Imran Khan and I agree to work closely towards enhancing our bilateral cooperation in the economic sector and a number of other areas including trade, investments, science, technology, defense and education. During the joint briefing, Khan also pitched the multi-billion dollar China-Pakistan economic corridor as a trade and connectivity booster and emphasized the importance of regional cooperation through the platform of SARC, the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. Moving on, residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir have lamented the poor condition of roads and lack of basic facilities of health care and education in the region. They blame corruption and ignorance in the system have become a major challenge for the growth of the illegally occupied territory, leaving its future in dark. Locals in remote areas of Pakistan-administered Kashmir have lamented that the poor condition of roads and absence of poor education and healthcare facilities continue to make life miserable for them. They say their patience has given way after no hospitals, schools and basic facilities are in sight to be developed as authorities in the illegally occupied region that work at behest of Islamabad do not pay any heed to their requests. They said hollow promises to fix the roads and improve infrastructure keep coming from the politicians, but that too only at the time of elections. <laughs> People of Pakistan administered Kashmir have been waiting for years now for a better administration that could work for their development. However, corruption and ignorance in the system has become a major challenge for the growth of the region, leaving its future in dark. In news from Nepal, people in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Tuesday welcomed the Supreme Court's decision of reinstatement of the lower house of parliament by coming out on streets and demanded Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli to resign from his post. Oli had dissolved the house and called for an early election amid squabbling within the ruling Nepal Communist Party last December. People in Nepal's capital Kathmandu celebrated the Supreme Court's decision of reinstatement of the lower house of parliament by smearing their faces in Burmelian and lighting candles on the streets. The top court ordered the reinstatement of parliament, dealing a blow to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli, who dissolved the house and called for an early election amid squabbling within the ruling Nepal Communist Party. This is the great victory of all those people who stood against this kind of uh, step, un unconstitutional step. And now I think the only option that is left for K.P. Oli is to resign from his post and accept the uh, accept all the constitutional things, he has to accept the order given by the uh, Supreme Court. Oli had defended his move, saying his rivals in the Nepal Communist Party had not cooperated with the government in policy decisions. But the apex court on Tuesday rejected this and ordered that parliament be convened within 13 days. The Himalayan nation has been in political turmoil since December when Oli made a sudden decision to call for elections 18 months ahead of the schedule amid the coronavirus pandemic that has hit the tourism-dependent economy hard. Moving on to news from Afghanistan. Afghanistan launched its coronavirus vaccination program on Tuesday aimed at inoculating hundreds of thousands as the war-weary nation reels from attacks by insurgents. The Taliban have announced their backing for the vaccination campaign. However, the inoculation will take place amid relentless violence and the peace talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government that have resumed in Doha this week. 
Afghanistan began its first COVID-19 vaccinations on Tuesday, administering doses initially to security force members, health workers and journalists in a campaign that may face challenges from a sharp rise in violence. The war-damaged country received 500,000 doses of AstraZeneca's vaccine from the Serum Institute of India, which is producing the vaccine for mid- and low-income countries earlier this month. In a ceremony marking the first vaccinations at the presidential palace, President Ashraf Ghani urged all sectors of the Afghan public to collaborate for fair distribution of the vaccine. که نظام مره بر توزیع عادلانه که وزارت محترم سعت آمه پیشنات کرده امراش هم کاری کن کوشش های ما برای ایجاد منابع برای دور دوم چل تا چل فیصد مردم افغانستان در بر بگیره انشالله تالا بزودی نتیجه خواهد داد the Taliban insurgents fighting the foreign-backed Afghan government have announced their backing for the vaccination campaign. However, the inoculations will take place amid relentless violence despite the government and the Taliban insurgents opening peace talks in September. The discussions have produced no progress to date. Meanwhile, after weeks of delays, peace talks between the both sides resumed this week in the Qatari capital, Doha. There were no details about the talks except for an announcement that the first item of business would be setting the agenda. Afghanistan has so far registered 55,664 infections and 2,436 deaths. But experts say cases are significantly underreported due to low testing and limited access to medical facilities in the war-torn country. Men in northern Afghanistan are training horses like old times in a bit to preserve their traditional game of buskashi. Buskashi meaning goat grabbing is a tough game in which horse riding rivals compete fiercely to grab a goat carcass and deliver it to the goal, a circle on the ground. Afghan men in Afghanistan's northern Jawzjan province are keeping horses and training them like old days in a bid to preserve their traditional game of buzkashi. Buzkashi meaning goat grabbing is a traditional tough game in Afghanistan in which horse riding rivals compete fiercely to grab a goat carcass and deliver it to the goal, a circle on the ground. According to buzkash or goat grabbers in Afghanistan, buzkashi is a costly game as it involves feeding a horse for the whole month which is costly. Buzkashi was registered with Afghanistan National Olympic Committee five years ago, and since then horse riders and fans of the game in the Asian country have been doing their best to promote the traditional sport. As government has removed COVID-19 restrictions, citing less number of infection cases, theatre artists in India's Jammu and Kashmir are back on stage. Theatre events are being organised in Srinagar city after almost a year. Have a look. After COVID-19 relaxation, theatre shows are being organised in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory. Theatre plays in Srinagar are a part of efforts that authorities make to promote traditional culture among youngsters of the Kashmir Valley. तो आज जो यहाँ पर टाइगर हॉल में तीन रोज़ा ये प्रोग्राम हुआ यहाँ पर हमने देखा बहुत से जो ड्रामा जो आर्टिस्ट हैं जिन्होंने परफॉर्म किया है थिएटर प्लेज यहाँ पर बहुत अच्छा लगा कि ये होना भी चाहिए इन फ्यूचर में भी ताकि जो ये हमारा जो अगर हम कश्मीर जो थिएटर जो प्लेज हैं ये हमारा जो कल्चर है ये Due to COVID-19 lockdown, all the activities involving public gatherings like theatre shows were halted across India. Now with the assistance from local authorities, the artists are again coming together to hold such folk shows successfully. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline. And follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button